Hi, good morning, how are you? Oh, oh sorry. I thought I hadn't taken the handbrake off and I'm just going up a hill. Anyway, nice to see you all. I'm actually starting from start because I haven't done a video for a while. Oh, hello. Let's let some people out. Yeah, and uh, so, and I can't remember what it was the last time we spoke. I can't remember what I was talking about. So I'm going to talk about just what's happened recently, you know, how things are going with us. And uh, and then uh, by all means, you know, leave some comments in the comment section if I haven't turned them off or get in touch with me. Derek Watson, the angry dentist. Ramsgate, Kent, England, UK, Europe, the world, the solar system, the galaxy, etc, etc. You know, I used to do that when you were at school. I used to, you know, fully, fully qualified address, it's called. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I mean, it's a Monday morning. It's very grey, low cloud, visibility very poor, not flying weather at all. And uh, you know when people, you know, on a Monday morning you go in and people say to you, oh, what, what did you do for the weekend? What did you do at the weekend? And you're, and you're like, oh, I ventured out really, oh, you know. You don't want to tell them that, do you? So, um, and in fact, I, you know, sometimes I do a load of weird stuff that no, nobody in their right mind would do. Like, for example, uh, we, we've got a bedroom that was full of family photos, all analog, you know, all printed out on papyrus. And so we've embarked upon a project to try and scan these things. And it's going to take about 40, 50 hours to do all this. We've done about, uh, I don't know, eight, eight hours worth of it so far. And, you know, when you do a job like that, which, you know, you, let me pop my lights on because I have this rule, if I can't see the, uh, if I can't see the figures on the dashboard, I put the lights on. And if I think that uh, if I was to put the, he the, the headlights on, I would be able to see them on the road, then that's when I put the headlights on, you see. But this is analog, you see, it's like, I don't have one of these digital cars that decides when to put the headlights you've on. You've all got those cars, haven't you? George, you don't have to care about when to put the headlights on because the, the car does it for you, the car does the thinking for you. You don't have to have a rule about when to put the headlights on. You're just like, ah, oh, cars turn the headlights on. But not, no, I have to, I have to decide. Because I'm what they call an old person. My uh, father's car, <laughs> my first car had a choke, which you youngsters, Generation Z, you'll need to Google what a choke is. Um, and you might think a choke was an inconvenience, but in fact a choke was not, not at all an inconvenience. A choke was, was a way, was quite easy and straightforward way to get your car started when, when it was cold, you know. Nowadays, this thing's got an automatic choke. So, oh, all cars have got automatic chokes now, haven't they, unless they're vintage cars. But, um, but being a diesel, I don't know how on earth it starts up, because on the tractor I have to preheat the diesel plugs uh, to get the, to get the uh, enough temperature there to um, detonate the diesel fuel. Uh, when to start the engine up whereas on this uh, you used to on a diesel car you used to have to do the same there was like a you had to turn the key backwards to warm up the diesel plugs and then turn it forward after a couple of seconds to uh, get it started but now you just get in this and turn the turn the ignition and it starts like a petrol engine so I don't know how they've done that possibly uh, possibly it's a bit like a uh, the seatbelt thing, yeah? Because this, this car is such low technology. It's a Peugeot partner van, basically. It's such low technology that, um, but it's still like magic. You know, like Asimov said, was it Asimov or Carl Sagan, who said that any sufficiently advanced level of technology will appear like magic. Um, and uh, 
when someone's sitting in the passenger seat and they're not wearing not they're not wearing the seatbelt, the thing goes berserk, goes ballistic. But but there's nobody sitting in the passenger seat at the moment, and the seatbelt's not done up, and yet there's no warning alarms coming on at all. Which is like, how does it know? How does it know? There's nobody there. <laughs> I honestly don't know how it knows when somebody's there and should have their seatbelt on unless it's got a weight sensor or something in the chair and it can tell if someone's sitting on there but in which case what happens if you put a computer in there or or a parcel or you know or something or <clears throat> and, and anyway it can't have a weight sensor the weight sensor would be far too expensive to incorporate in the passenger seat of a Peugeot partner van they can't I, if there were weight sensors in seats then the government would be wanting to hack into them to measure how fat everyone was. There can't be weight sensors in C. I bloody hope there aren't, anyway. Oh dear. It would be the most secret programme, wouldn't it? Anyway, now you know why I've started. Because it's the first day back to work. So I've had a week off. So I was going to go to Centre Parks with my daughter and um, then of course we went into uh, uh, quarantine, the whole country. So, um, Centre Park's cancelled, which left me with a week without patience. And uh, my nurse, <laughs> God love her little fluffy pink socks, uh, had been looking forward to a week off and she told me, in no uncertain terms, was I to book up that week. Um, which is fair enough, you know, I mean, it's fair enough. So basically I've had a week off at home which has turned out to be quite nice. I think my wife's quite enjoyed having me around. I've done a few bits and bobs around the house, you know, moved a few heavy things around. Actually, uh, what I have done is I drained down the central heating, believe it or not, on the hot water system and uh, put a few uh, thermostatic valves on the radiators. Ha, there you go, you see. This is uh, one of the advantages of being an autodidactic polymath. You, uh, it's, it's very difficult to know what to put on your passport under occupation, you know. What do I put down? Pilot, dentist, plumber. Very difficult. Anyway. So, uh, yeah, so I've done a, done a few bits and bobs. But yesterday I spent um, pretty much all day uh, organising the photos. And we haven't even... Oh, God, I meant to bring them into work, you see, because the... The server that's got them all on is at work because that's on the fastest internet connection. So, um, so uh, excluding the ones I've scanned, which are, are waiting to go to work, uh, I spent all day yesterday trying to reorganise the directory structure on my file server at work, which I can <clears throat> dial into. And uh, got twenty nine thousand photos to. Uh, what it does is it uh, generates thumbnails for them all so that you can you can view them quickly. Let's just sort this heating out because oh, I'm fogging up a bit here. That should be better. I'll oh, turn those on. Yeah, so um, in fact I thrashed this hard, these NAS so badly it's um, one of the drives has failed so I might have to order a new drive in. Oh, stop. That's not vice control, by the way. I've just flicked the swing. Anyway, so where was I? Oh, yeah. So we were going to talk about dentistry, weren't we, about half an hour ago? Well, surgery's actually not doing too badly, to be honest. Um, I've sort of realised that we're in competition with two other major sectors. One is the corporate sector, and the other one, obviously, is the publicly funded national uh, health service sector. And both of those are doing a great job of coping really badly with uh, quarantine and large numbers of uh, staff on their payroll, which are uh, salaried, you know, and therefore a large part of their fixed operating cost is salaries. Uh, so I think it was all about to blow up when the uh, furlough scheme came to an end at the end of not October, is it, or September, I forget. What are we in now? November. December? No. 
yeah, it's December. It's the first of December. So, of course, it came to an end at the end of October, and then it, and then old uh, Rishi Sunak, whose wife is apparently richer than the Queen, has uh, injected another 80% of uh, financial heroin into the payroll system. <laughs> and so everybody, uh, the, that's kept the big corporates happy because they're, they've are they got no expenses. Well, they've got their fixed expenses, but he's covering most of them. And, uh, and in the meantime, uh, they're, hello, it's a cyclist here who's all over the road. Yeah, so, um, I mean, they're, they're doing quite well because, um, Hang on a second. Let me just concentrate on not running the stupid cyclist over, because he's all over the place. He's just cut, just cut a right-hand corner by going right to the centre of the road. So he's obviously got a death wish. But what he has got is a is a camera on the top of his head, which I think they all wear now, don't they? Something give the coroner something to look at. Yeah. So. Um, you know this 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 uh, <laughs> Sarah. Sarah I've never you know been in general practice Hurley the chief dental officer come up with this scheme <coughs> an honor system whereby dentists are paid 100% of their pre-covid income in return for an undertaking that they won't do less than 20% of their pre-covid output and they absolutely absolutely will not do any more private work and take advantage of the the gap, you know, the 80% gap in the middle by by increasing their private work. Of course, they would never do that, you know. <laughs> dib, 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 dib on a scout's honour that they won't do that, you know. So, they're getting, uh, of, course they're, of course they're doing private work. They're doing, like, the 80% of the work, of the time that they're getting paid by the National Health Service, they're now, they've now filled it up with private work on the patients who've been told that all they can have on the NHS now is antibiotics over the phone and no work unless they go uh, miraculously ask the, the one question that every dentist is is waiting for the patient to ask which is that could I get this done if I went privately although some patients never ask that because uh, for them it's not an option anyway so that's the private sector's happy because of uh, Rishi and the uh, and the fact that we've got a rather um, dim dim chief dental officer. I don't know what's going to happen in April because the money runs out on the 31st of March. Uh, now it seems to me that money doesn't really matter at the moment. I mean, uh, the, the the government is printing money uh, left, right, and centre. So. lack of money is not going to be a problem for anything at the moment, it doesn't matter in fact I think what they do, the government debts are so high now there's only three ways governments can get rid of debts, they can default on the debts which uh, you might think actually never happens and, and people will tell you that sovereign debt uh, government bonds and that, they're, they're never defaulted on, but in fact um, uh, governments do default on debts yeah no tend to think of them as the basket case governments that default on the debts like the Venezuelas and the Puerto Ricos and the you know Argentinas and things like that but in fact um, in 1971 the uh, United States was promising to exchange uh, every ounce of gold or every $35 that anyone took in for an ounce of gold uh, and at the time, an ounce of gold was probably worth about three hundred and fifty dollars. So, so there was a ten times there's an arbitrage opportunity there. It wasn't available to the common man because you couldn't take thirty five dollars into a bank and, and and buy an ounce of gold. But if you had, if you're a foreign country like France, uh, and you had dollars, you could insist that the American government exchange them for gold. And, and which they did, and uh, until uh, Nixon found that he didn't have enough gold to back up the dollars that he wanted to print to fight the Vietnam War, so he then literally defaulted on the value of the currency. 
and said, uh, you know, that, that, that they're no longer were they going to give away an ounce of gold for every thirty-five dollars, and then gold then floated up to its well, it went up to eight hundred dollars, I think, and then and then floated down a bit. It was a bit bubbly, a bit of frothy, as they say in the in the city, and then it went down again to two hundred or three hundred or something, which was its market value. But there's, um, there's no markets at the moment. The markets aren't working. They literally aren't working. In the same way as uh, the, during the fall of Rome, the markets probably weren't working. Uh, well, certainly not in terms of money, anyway. You know, I dare say you could still exchange a pint of milk for two eggs or whatever. But um, no, nobody's really wanted the Roman currency. And uh, anyway, let's not go into macroeconomics, which is a fascinating subject, actually. But uh, so that's the that's the corporate sector sitting there, fat, dumb, and happy, uh, living on the money that uh, Sunak, uh, the Bank of England, and, and the Treasury are printing between the two of them. And uh, the National Health Service is, um, <clears throat> you know, they've got this added level of being tied up in this centralised Soviet-style top-down micromanagement, where. Uh, you know, everyone's got to stand a certain distance <laughs> as measured by a, by, a, by a tape measure and uh, everyone's got a, that little watch, you know, that the nurses wear on their thing. That's that's a stopwatch now because they've got to know to within the minute <clears throat> how soon they can clear up the surgery. Which is apparently 15 minutes from uh, when the dentist puts down the drill. Oh, that's it, that's it, that's it now. Everyone, every time everyone coughs, that's it. It's your death sentence. Oh, dear. So in the middle, of course, you've got the independent corporate sector. Uh, the, the independent private sector. The independent private sector, like me. You know, small guys. One dentist, two dentists, nurse, two, three nurses. One receptionist, a cleaner. Who are who are being very nimble and who can source the small amounts of uh, PPE that are required and are pretty much offering uh, a full service under the medical exemption loophole. Well, it's not a loophole. I mean, it's people are allowed to receive medical treatment and thank God dentistry is still regarded as uh, medical treatment. Got a new phone, by the way. Pixel 4a. My problem is I don't have a computer that's fast enough to render these bloody things. So, um, there we go. Yeah, so we're <clears throat> we're sort of open as normal, and we're advertising in the paper that we're open as normal, uh, and uh, we've done a little bit of radio advertising which is sort of uh, drive time, you know, uh, first impressions dental, which is, you know, uh, have, have a good day, first impressions dental. And uh, they're doing a Christmas thing. Uh, have a nice day with uh, first impressions dental, wishes you a very happy Christmas and a merry new year, whatever. So for the first time in my life, I'm comfortable with the advertising budget. It's about... 150 pounds a week, I suppose, but for the first time in my life, I'm, I'm actually comfortable with it. And that's because I know that we're able to advertise something which is a competitive advantage. We've got a unique selling point. We are open, and so many other dentists are shut. We are, there, there, I've seen some strange things in dentistry. I've seen a lack of NHS dentists to the point where the commissioning authority felt it necessary to advertise on the handles of petrol pumps the number to get a dentist and it wasn't because they had any dentists it was because they needed to allay public concern and unhappiness about the fact that there were no NHS dentists they had to calm everybody down by saying look don't worry uh, if you need a dentist there is this number there's Batman has published a number so <laughs> get on the bat line and get some help and then of course <clears throat> knowing full well that uh, you know 95% of the people who read that are not, not ever going to ring it 
and the 5% who do ring it uh, can do naff all when they're told that the nearest dentist is uh, 50 miles away and they've got three screaming kids and no car, you know? But it's uh, another weird thing that happens has happened in my lifetime is that the a company that makes Cavit, basically, temporary filling material, is sponsoring the morning weather on, on our southeast news and possibly on other news as well but uh, you know and, and not just like for a week or two I mean they've been doing it for months <laughs> so they're selling a lot of product people are shoveling a lot of this stuff in their mouths and that can only mean that uh, they're in pain you know because patients who've got holes in their teeth don't don't go out and buy uh, temporary filling material unless they think it's going to solve a problem and that problem is usually toothache uh, so all very sad unfortunately anyway so, uh, but, so as I say we're doing okay you know because we're open open as normal and it's a Monday and it's the first Monday after the holiday so what will happen is I shall talk too much and Lou will be kicking me saying shut up let's get the next patient in but then you know every cloud has a silver lining I mean I would imagine and, and all sorts of things that were thought to be impossible have become possible haven't they you know some of the things we were told that uh, uh, take 10 years 20 years like medicine's approval apparently apparently can, <coughs> can be done quicker and apparently some of the things that can't be funded <coughs> because the Treasury's got no money can be funded now because apparently the Treasury can make money appear but I was talking about the three ways that governments write off debts actually and I said the first one is to default um, the second one is uh, to outgrow the debt. So in other words, if you owe another kid a five pound at school for gobstoppers, and then you grow up and get a job, then all of a sudden your wages, your first wage packet will pay that five pound debt off because you've outgrown the debt. Your personal economy has expanded. And uh, in the same, the same way as government default is, is pretty well impossible. Uh, outgrowing debts with Rishi Sunak as chancellor, or anybody as chancellor. The, de the debts are already too big to outgrow. Mathematically, impossible, impossible. It's like, uh, you know, it's like setting off in a, a, a Renault Reliant trying to catch a, a Porsche from a standing start. It, it's just not going to happen. And uh, the governments are not going to, you know, cut government. The government's not going to be cut to the sort of size, and government spending is not going to be cut by the extent necessary to make that happen. Just, it's just not going to happen. Um, and then the third um, way to get rid of it, and really the only realistic way, the the, the growth uh, story. Though you're you're here pushed by politicians. That's because they don't like to admit the third way of doing it is the way that they're actually doing it which is to um, debase the currency and inflate the debt away. So to the point where, let's say you, um, you know, you own, you own, uh, you, let's say that the, the country has a national debt of, I don't know, 100,000 pounds per household. And then what you need to do is get to the currency to a point where 100,000 pound won't buy a ham sandwich. And uh, then, then all of a sudden, your debt is negligible, isn't it? In in real terms, after inflation. So they inflate the debt away, and that's what, of course, and, that, and that's why money is free and plentiful because they're rather hoping. And those of you who are trying to understand this better need to look at a thing called um, is it Japanomics? Ja anyway, the, econ the economy of Japan. But they've been trying to do this for 20, 25 years, uh, and. Um, they're trying to they're trying to just push inflation up through the roof but how to cope with that is another we'll cover another day what to do in response 
It's a government money creation. They call it borrowing, but it's not. It's money creation. All right, lovely. I'll uh, go and see uh, see how Lou's getting on. Hope you're well. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.